G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, it's time for another Banggood product review. This time we're going to look at a little rotary tool that has caught my eye a while back when I was looking at the uh, rotary tools that you could use to make a tool post grinder for a small lathe. And I got the Hilda, and I was happy with the Hilda, it's excellent. It's a 400 watt unit, does a great job, not just as a tool post grinder, but also just as a general cutoff tool and grinding tool. It's excellent. Anyway, this, uh, this little product we're going to look at today was a, an item that I really liked the look of, looked well made. It was an interesting item because it, uh, it only had 75 watt advertised power, which is a half or even a third of some of the Dremels that you can buy. And the interesting thing was it only spun up to 8,000 RPM, which is pretty low for a rotary tool. Um, generally, rotary tools go well in, into the double digits. You know, the Dremel's go up to 35,000. The Hilda goes up somewhere around there as well. And this thing's only doing 8,000 RPM. And I thought, this is a bit odd, you know. What I liked about it also was that it had a perfectly cylindrical, symmetrical-looking body, and it would mount in a tool post mount very easily much like the Hilda. So anyway, I thought, what the hell, let's get this thing and have a look at it to see what makes it tick. So that's today's product. So here's some screen grabs of it. And now let's have a look at the product itself. So what have we got? Some Chinese writing. Amoshi. That almost looks like Japanese rather than Chinese. Hmm. Alright. Got catches on the ends as well. Wow. Hmm, interesting. Hmm, transformer. It's a unit. Oh, shit, it's, he it's uh, quite heavy for its size. This has got a yeah, six mil drill chuck on it, Jacob style chuck. I might have to move this. Camera's in the way a bit. Now we got some accessories. Grinding and buffing and this is actually less powerful than a Dremel, than an equivalent Dremel. So I don't know how it's going to go. Uh, I got it because I like the fact that it's got an aluminium body. You could easily mount this in a, um, a tool post holder. It's perfectly symmetrical. The only thing that put me off this originally was there's no cooling ventilation on it. So I don't know how it's going to go. It's, uh, it's also apparently I'm pretty sure this is reversible, so it will spin in both directions, which would be really handy for tool post grinding where you want to, say, sharpen something and you want the disc to go in a certain direction, so you're cutting, grinding away from the cutting edge rather than towards it. And I believe, yeah, this is variable speed as well. Hang on. So, yeah, it's variable speed on the, on the transformer rather than on the actual unit. Mm, oh, very interesting. Oh yeah, here's some drills. Got some drills as well. Chuck key. This looks like Japanese to me. Emoshi. Well, I think this is Japanese, not Chinese. I could be wrong. Hmm. I'll have to look up this company and see what what's going on, but that definitely looks like Japanese to me. But I could be 
way wrong. Okay. So how does this come off? Like so. So that's the unit. What's it say? this company up before we go any further and see who they are. It looks, be looks beautifully made. Looks like looks like good quality. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is DC. You can tell the way it's spinning and coming to a halt. There's permanent magnets in this. So yeah, this is definitely a DC unit. Whereas the other one is uh, The Hilda was AC. So we've got reverse, stop and forward on the switch. Three position switch. On off. And the variable speed as I said is on the is on the transformer. I'll look up Amoshi. Amoshi and see what the company is. I looked up the company Amoshi on the internet and it's actually a Chinese company. Uh, so it shows what I know about languages. But they do seem to specialise in making these types of units, uh, small Dremel type units. And all of this stuff looks very classy. It looks very well made. Even the little controller here, Transformer's got a raised, clear, sort of an Amoshi uh, emblem on it. It looks pretty good. All looks very nice. And it's got a parallel plug. It's like they used to have on the old computers years ago. It's just the old style twin connector. And of course they've given us a universal adapter so that'll work on that. So I suppose it's a matter of plug it in and see what happens. I took the little chuck key out of its bag and it's a nicely made unit. The chuck is a 6mm chuck, Jacob style, and uh, it seems okay. That's the brand. Sanu, it's a Sanu chuck, drill chuck, well they make, Sanu make uh, lathe chucks and Banggood do sell Sanu lathe chucks, so I've never reviewed a Sanu. Uh, item before so I don't know how good they are but it looks quite well made. Right, so let's undo this. Now the the DC power plug goes into the end of the unit as a quite a tight fitting plug so that's not going to fall out in a hurry which is good that's how you want it. Now under the power cord and we're good to go so I might get a little extension lead so you can see what we're doing the cord on this is so the transformer's not terribly long, so I'll get a power cord. Now the power cord on this, from the unit to the transformer, is exactly a metre long. I've plugged it in, power's on, and there's a green, a green light showing. Now, turn the unit on. Nothing happens. We've got to go to the to the forward position. Hmm, what's happening here? Uh, now we're right. Right, okay. It's forward. Stop. Hmm. 
now I can tell straight away that this has got a planetary gearbox in it. This is uh, turning very slowly. I pretty well bet there's a planetary gearbox. Got reverse. Full speed. Slower speed. The way that stops. Yeah, that suggests straight away that it's got a planetary gearbox. You can actually hear the gears rotating. So it's not a straight drive like a Dremel. So this should be quite powerful even though it's only a low wattage thing. Look how quickly that stops, you see? So yeah, it's definitely got a planetary gearbox in it. So, this should be quite a gutsy little unit for its, uh, for its wattage, which is on the back of this, what did I say? One amp, it's pulling. Hmm. They rated this at about 70 or 75 watts, I'll have to check. Here it is compared to the Hilda. You can see it's a lot smaller unit. Yeah, the Hilda's twice as heavy at least. Yeah, more than twice as heavy. So this is a lot lighter, but it's still a solid all-metal unit. So to check the run out, we'll take the cutting disc out of this chuck and we'll put it in that chuck and see how, uh, how true it spins. Okay. See, it stops quick, doesn't it? That's a combination of the magnet, permanent magnet motor, the DC motor, and the, the reduction gearbox, which is probably a planetary style, I think. Got a fair bit of vibration, like there's, you know, quite a bit of vibration there. It's, it's certainly not smooth. Vibrates mm, quite a bit actually. It's actually smoother in forward. Forward rotation is not so bad. But yeah, you can hear the gears. Only backlash. Hmm, it's an interesting thing. Now, I mean, I don't think. I think this is too big a disc for this unit to spin. I mean, if I was to try and cut something with this, I think it would struggle. We'll try it anyway, just see, but I think that it's really not meant for a 75mm disc. It's only meant for these smaller discs, the same as a, gen a normal Dremel, you know. It's not a, a heavy-duty unit like the Hilda. But I'll just try it and see what happens. I expect it will just bog down. All right, we're coming on maximum speed.
actually cut through it. I'm surprised. It actually, even though it's not spinning anywhere near the revs that the Hilda is, it actually cut through this this reasonably thick steel. That's uh, pretty impressive, really. So it will it will do this. It didn't even get warm. I mean, it feels totally cold. Well, that's a big surprise. I didn't expect it to do that. So yeah, it's it's got a geared. It's got a gear driven um, chuck on it, so that's pretty damn impressive. Let's try cutting a quarter inch Whitworth bolt with it, see how it goes. There you go, it did it. Took a while but it got there. The motor itself is not even hardly warm. You can see the, the grindings are sticking to the outside of it because the magnet inside, see that? So that's something you have to think about. If you're working with steel, the cuttings are going to stick to it. They supply a 3mm drill, so let's try it through the steel, see how it goes. Now that's uh, full speed. Wow, no, wor no worries at all. vibration is there but it's not sort of extreme it's just very noticeable it's definitely to do with the gearbox it's got in it but it's certainly got plenty of power I mean I'm surprised if this was direct drive it wouldn't have anywhere near the, the guts it's got so it is yeah quite powerful yeah all right we'll put a quarter inch drill in it which is maximum chuck capacity See what happens. This is one that I sharpened with the Hilda the other day. Huh, this will be interesting. No slop or anywhere, no run out, it's good. for it I think. We'll go back a size. Alright, this is three sixteenths. This is quite hard steel is it's uh, it's not butter soft, that's for sure. Mmm, how's that grab you? Three sixteenths. Whoops. So it's got pretty good power. Once again, it's not even getting warm, so yeah, that's pretty impressive. Let's try it at the lower speed and see how it goes.
no problem. So having the gearbox gives it a lot more grunt than say a Dremel when it's not going to burn the drill tips. So this is where it's a winner. It actually gives you proper um, torque advantage, you know, you've got that uh, gearing advantage. At a rough guess, if you apply basic mathematics and a Dremel will say spinning at 30,000, 32,000, this is spinning at 8,000, that would suggest this has got a 4 to 1 reduction gearbox, which is quite a big thing. So, yeah, that's got to be a good thing, really, if you're into sort of drilling computer chassis or just drilling in general, because, yeah, it's a controllable speed that's not going to burn up your, your tips. It's a, it's a great idea. Yeah, really good. So, uh, steel cuttings and grinding is going to be a, a problem with this little machine. Well, here's a lathe turning and a, some other grindings that I've picked up with my magnetic broom sweeper. So if we bring this little drill over near them, it picks them up. Now, that could be uh, a bit of a nuisance. That is always going to be a problem with a DC unit that uses permanent magnets. It will pick up grindings and cuttings, whereas a, a unit that has um, coils or windings, that won't be an issue. So yeah, that's a bit of a that's a bit of a negative, I'm afraid, on this. I don't like that idea. To explain the problem we've got with this little drill with this magnetic um, attraction through the aluminium body, I'll show you how having a steel body and magnets completely eliminates that issue. I mean, this is a design flaw. They should never have used aluminium to uh, make this component. This should be steel or should be have a steel sleeve over it to stop the magnetic effect. Now here's some grindings and cuttings from my magnetic broom. Now, you would have seen a project on this a video a, while, a long while back. Here's my magnetic broom and it's just wheels, metal channel case, and some old um, DC motor magnet, permanent magnets in it. You just wheel it around, picks up all the rubbish without bending over. And you can do it 20 times a day and it's a piece of cake. Now, that's got a steel outer casing. And as you see, there is no magnetic attraction to particles on the outside of this because this acts as a, as a shield. Now, if I put this down over these magnetic over these particles, nothing gets picked up, nothing at all. Has no magnetic field at all there. I run it over. They're all gone. They're all on the inside. So that's what I'm saying. When they made that drill, even though the aluminium looks nice, it's a poor choice. It's a bad choice because. Aluminium won't stop magnetic field to any significant effect. The magnets inside are obviously very powerful. It's a DC motor. This is going to pick all the rubbish up. So they should have made this with a steel outer casing to stop all that effect. As it is, that's going to be a nuisance if you're working on steel because all the rubbish is going to have a good chance of coming up and sticking on the unit. That's a, that's a big negative. I, I don't like that at all. So, does this thing actually do 8,000 RPM? It's very quiet compared to other rotary tools, so I suppose we should check it. That's full speed, and that's low speed, which should be 5,000. So, let's take some measurements and see what we get. 7,505, that's maximum speed. 4,702, that's minimum speed, so those speeds are close to spec, not perfect, 
you know, so I just used a bit of chalk to take the, the readings. That will work just as good as uh, reflective tape, save wasting your tape, and uh, yeah, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Most of the time it does. So what are my thoughts on the unit? Well, it, it's, it's a case of almost but not quite, you know. It, it's so nicely made. It's a quality build, but the big letdown is that magnetic attraction. That's a serious letdown. Uh, if you're working particularly near electrical components, and that magnetic field could, could have some potential um, downsides. Plus it's going to pick up any grindings and cuttings and you could get steel splinters. You don't want stuff being, you know, stuck on the side of the unit where you're holding it. It's too easy to get uh, bits of steel stuck in your fingers and stuff. So I'm really disappointed with this unit, the way they've done it. They could have so easily shielded those magnets and not had an issue. All it takes is a bit of really thin steel just to shield them and problem problem solved. So they really need to, I think, reassess this unit. Functionally, it's great. The forward reverse is terrific. The chuck is terrific. The accuracy is great. Having the gearbox it gives you more power than a Dremel, even though it's only half as powerful. It's actually got more pull and it's more usable for drilling than a Dremel because, uh, yeah, that torque multiplying f function of the gearbox is the, is the winner. As a grinder, torque grinder, you can mount it. It's very symmetrical. It's powerful enough. It should spin a little bit harder as a TPG. 8,000 RPM is mm, just enough. But uh, with the gear reduction, well, that's what they're limited to, I think. But you could use it as TPG, but it wouldn't be ideal. So, uh, I can only say to people, make up your own minds on this. I'm not going to recommend it or push it either way. I'm disappointed. I, I really thought this would be super duper good, and it would be, except for that that magnetic attraction, which is definitely a big downer. You'd never want work tools being magnetised uh, in a workshop, yeah, it's going to just pick up steel, you get it in your fingers, it's hard to clean off, it's just bad news. So there you have it, I've been honest on this review as I always am, I always look at this stuff logically, I mean the knob on here should be bigger as well, I don't have a problem with the um, speed adjuster being on the transformer because that works quite okay as far as I'm concerned. Once you set your speed, you shouldn't be sort of having to change it while you handle the unit. And you get a few components, useful stuff with it, a nice case. It's, it's worth the money, but it's just that, that one issue, which is a big issue as far as I'm concerned. All right, well, that's it from me. I hope you found this interesting, and yeah, I'm disappointed. I am definitely disappointed with the way this turned out I uh, yeah I can't make, say much more on the matter alright that's it from me see you next time cheers